We're in section 6.2, sine wave characteristics. Sine waves may represent voltage, current, or some other parameter. Most commonly, we'll be looking at voltage. The period of a sine wave is the time from any given point on the cycle to the same point on the following cycle. The period is measured in time and in most cases it is measured in seconds or fractions thereof. The time of a 60 cycle second is 16.667 milliseconds. So if we took, uh, if we said one second and we divided it into 60 parts, then we would get the time and here this would be the time of one cycle and hence uh, one period. And we could look at a circuit simulation and here we would have our um, our single uh, the period of one cycle and this actually came from our uh, previous lesson remember we started out with one volt at 60 Hertz and this is the resultant sine wave and the time from uh, right here to right here that represents one period and we can see the time read out right here 16 it's about 16.5 milliseconds should be 16.6 I guess we could have uh, our measurement points are not quite perfect but uh, you get the idea that um, one period if we're going at 60 hertz is 16.6 milliseconds okay frequency the frequency of a sine wave is the number of complete cycles that occur in one second. Frequency is measured in a quantity called Hertz. One Hertz corresponds to one cycle per second. Frequency and period have an inverse relationship. We can say that time equals one over frequency and that frequency equals one over time. And we just actually on the previous screen we did this. We said uh, one over 60 equals uh, it was point oh one six six six. Actually, that would that was that's how we would read sixteen point six milliseconds. But on a calculator, it would come up looking like that, and that's the fractional equivalent of uh, sixteen point six six milliseconds. And also, frequency equals one over time. So if we took that value and we said one over that value, point zero one six six six, we would get sixty. So time equals one over frequency and frequency equals one over time. Frequency to period and period to frequency conversions are common in electronic calculations. Peak value. The peak value of a sine wave is the maximum value or current it reaches. This is the value you would read on an oscilloscope and we had our, when we previously looked at that signal, the peak value would be at this point where that'd be the positive peak and this would represent the negative peak. Peak voltages occur at two different points in the cycle. One is positive, one is negative. The positive peak occurs at, and this is 90 cycles, 90, 90, uh, 90 degrees and the negative at 270 degrees. The positive and negative have equal amplitudes and we can quickly look again at our uh, simulation and we can see that the um, let's take a and here we have it. Here we see the this is the uh, the peak value at this point, and then this is the negative peak. And this is at 90 degrees, and this is at 270. This is 360, and this is at zero. Okay, average values. The average value of any measured quantity is the sum of all the intermediate values. The average value of a full sine wave is zero. The average value of one half cycle of a sine wave is, and this is the, now this is the average of one half, so if you're looking at a, uh, a sine wave, and if we were to average every single point on this entire wave going both uh, positive and negative, well, uh, we're going to result in this. We're going to have the, you know, it's going to be zero. But if we average every point on 
the wave on just the positive side or just the negative side, we would find that our our average our the average of all of these values is this fractional value right here, 0.637. So if we wanted to calculate the average value of the peak wave, we would simply take it and again, if we, we started out with that, that voltage of one volt, if we took 0.637 times one volt peak, well then our average value is 0.637. Okay, RMS value. One of the most important characteristics of a sine wave is this RMS or oftentimes this is referred to as this effective value. The RMS value describes the sine wave in terms of an equivalent DC voltage. The RMS value of a sine wave produces the same heating effect in a resistance as an equal value of DC. Okay. The abbreviation RMS stands for root mean square and is determined by, and here we have a formula, uh, 0 0.707 times the peak value. And that is in voltage. If it's current, it'll be the same thing. Uh, the RMS current, or excuse me, the, the peak current times 0 0.707 will give us the RMS current. The derivation of this formula is addressed in upper level courses. For our purposes, we will simply use it as a method of converting between RMS and peak. And so let's take a look at um, our simulation. In our simulation, we showed the, the sine wave of one volt peak, and we had one volt uh, from uh, zero to the peak value here, and zero going to the negative peak. Now, we also have a multimeter connected into the circuit, and this is for discussion of, of for purposes of RMS. And notice the oscilloscope is connected across this one ohm or one yeah this one k ohm resistor, and we're measuring one volt uh, peak and one volt negative. I guess it would be two volts peak to peak if we were looking at it that way, but typically we say one volt peak. Now we put our voltmeter across the same place in the circuit across the same component and notice and we're measuring this we've selected AC and you'll notice the reading is 0 0.707.071 millivolts and that correlates to our calculation that we are the, the values that we just looked at remember we said the uh, RMS value is 0 0.707 times the peak value so we had looked at that previous signal and we saw that we had one volt peak to peak or one volt peak and then we took 0 0.707 times that value and that gave us the RMS value. RMS values for voltage or current and this is just a review if you take um, peak times 0 0.707 will give you the RMS value or you can take RMS value divided by 0 0.707 and that will give you the peak value. Or you can say RMS times 1.414 and that will give you peak. And so if we said, uh, with this, we already did this one, we, so we started out with 1 volt times 0 0.707 and obviously we got 0.707 volts. Then we took or we could take the RMS value, now that would be 0 0.707 in this case, and divided by 0 0.707, and that would equal the peak. So 0 0.707 divided by 0 0.707, that's one volt, which was our original value in peak. Or we could take RMS times 1.414. And if we took 0 0.707 times 1.414, we would get one volt. Most voltmeters are calibrated to measure in RMS. So when you measure, when you take a voltmeter, a VOM, or a digital multimeter, and you measure an, uh, an AC value, you will measure the RMS value. Oscilloscopes display peak or peak-to-peak -peak values. And this is, a, we've, I've alluded to it already, but another measurement used to describe sine waves are their peak-to-peak -peak values. 
the peak to peak value is the difference between the two peak values. And so here we have um, uh, the first peak, and this, this would be our positive peak. This is our negative peak. And if we're measuring from here to here, then we, uh, that would be our peak to peak value. And so when you're doing oscope readings, typically you refer to either the peak value or the peak to peak. And obviously peak to peak is going to be twice the value of the peak. And that concludes um, section 6.2.